Tonight I'm showing you my black walnut bookshelf design and some of the hard lessons that I learned along the way. I've talked in a few previous videos about this bookshelf design that I had been working on for my wife and it had been delayed and delayed for over two years. She finally said, okay, if you don't build this by the end of the summer, then I'm just gonna go buy one. And this is a big deal to a woodworker, especially for something as simple as a bookshelf. So I pushed back my other projects and I buckled down and finished this one. It wasn't by the end of the summer, but it was far enough along that we couldn't turn back. She gets the credit for the design and the look of it, and I worked out the details of how to make it all come together. I started out by planing down some 2x4s to give them a smooth surface and then glued two of them together. These were going to be the four corner posts that would carry the load from top to bottom, so I wanted them to be solid. I then cut down either side on the table saw to make the whole thing square. I wanted to support the walnut shelves with a small beam going between the two corners on each side. The beam would sit in a mortise inside the corner posts. These mortises were cut out with a chisel into each of the corner posts. The base of the bookshelf was going to be an enclosed cabinet where we'd be storing all of our piano books, sheet music, binders, and music bags, so the lower portion of the corner post would have to have a flat panel on it. The panel groove for that lower section was routed directly into the corner posts. Now, one of the frustrating things about woodworking is when the wood warps, especially when it warps bad. About a week after cutting out these posts and finishing them, they started to twist and warp, with the worst one twisting more than a quarter of an inch along a six foot length. I tried and tried to figure out a way to salvage these posts, but I realized I was gonna be angry at this project the entire time because there would be gaps everywhere and I would be trying to twist it into its shape to get it to fit and nothing would be square. So I gave up on the 2x4 idea and I got some higher quality poplar. This meant I had to remake everything on these posts. Not fun, but I was much faster the second time. I decided to assemble the sides into complete panels before working on anything in the middle of the cabinet. To connect the two sides of the bookshelf together, I made the cabinet face frame by cutting everything to length on the miter saw and then ripping it on the table saw down to the right size. The bottom of the face frame had a nice gentle curve on it because who doesn't like curves? I then screwed the cabinet face frame together and attached it to the two sides that I had already assembled. On the back, there was also a cross piece on the top and bottom of the cabinet. This piece needed to have a quarter inch rabbit cut around the perimeter for the back panel to sit in, so I laid the entire bookshelf down on its front and routed that out. The base of the cabinet and the cabinet shelf were three quarter inch plywood that was cut to fit inside the frame. The base was held in place with pocket screws around the edge. On the top of the bookshelf, my wife wanted some nice chunky molding with a simple profile so I made a solid frame and screwed that directly down into each of the four posts. I then cut out some nice square molding to put around the top edge. I mitered these corners and glued them in place. Below that, I just added some solid boards that kind of looked like craftsman style baseboards installed upside down. The next step was to build the flat panel cabinet doors. These were a simple craftsman style flat panel design that I routed into the edges of the door frame using my rail and style bit set. The panel then floats inside this groove. I glued up the doors and then drilled the holes for the hinges. Now came the fun part of working with the black walnut. These were six quarter boards that I cut to length and ripped so that they could be glued together. I used biscuits to assist in the assembly mainly because it makes it easier to align a long board during glue up. This type of joint along the grain actually doesn't get any stronger by using biscuits. Once they were glued up, I sanded them down using my belt sander and my random orbital sander and cut them to their final size. 
My design for this bookshelf had a notch cut out of each corner so the shelf would appear to partially wrap around each corner post. I later discovered that this wasn't my greatest design idea. Okay, here was the second painful learning experience. My first attempt to set the lowest shelf on top of the cabinet was a complete failure. I hadn't calculated the length of the shelf and determined if I could even clear the cross beams for the shelf above. I sat and puzzled over this for at least 30 minutes until my puzzler was sore trying to figure out how to make this work without ripping everything apart. I finally decided to cut the small beams out, chisel out the notches again, and make new beams on one end that I could install later. This actually ended up working out pretty well and covered up my design error very nicely. With that fixed, I was then able to cut the slots for the Z brackets to secure the walnut top onto the cabinet. The majority of this bookshelf would be painted white, so I set up a temporary spray booth by hanging plastic down from the ceiling in my garage. I never loved covering up wood with paint, but as I said before, I was not the primary designer on this bookshelf. Once the pieces were painted, I put the finish on the walnut, which in this case was Osmo Pollux Oil. This is quickly becoming one of my favorite finishes to work with. With the cross beams removed on one side, the final assembly went pretty well, and I was able to get the lower shelves in place, and then add the beams after that, to each of the shelves up above before setting the shelf on top. The final challenge was getting the cabinet into the house. This thing was heavy and I didn't want to scratch it, so I wrapped it in plastic and my neighbor and I carefully moved it into position in the living room. After two years of promising my wife I would build it, it felt really good to finally have it finished. and she was pretty excited too. This build was an interesting design challenge and I wanted to include my mistakes because I want people to know that even experienced woodworkers make mistakes. That experience just teaches you how to cover them up. So don't give up, keep building, keep making mistakes, cause we all do. Don't forget to hit subscribe and let me know in the comments below what mistakes you've made in your woodworking projects. See you next time.